Now, moving on with this sheet view, I'm going to start looking at these markers. What I want is that mini toolbar to display. What you see here is depending on the type of section or model that you're working with. It contains, first of all, the name of the section we're looking at, vertical section. And in this particular case, we have a dynamic link, in other words, a hyperlink to the design model. And we have another link to the open target, which is essentially what we're looking at here. So I'm going to go to this open design model, click on that. We are taken immediately to a design model of this section. Now it looks very similar to the sheet view that we just left, but this is actually a model, so we can rotate it and see what it looks like. So let's make this an isometric view. So we're seeing the section that we just made in wireframe. And we have the same call out information underneath. And we have another marker on the section line. So this is actually quite a nice way to display a section if you want to illustrate a section rather than a production drawing. Let's try this marker and zip into its mini toolbar. And you'll notice that there's quite a lot more information. Still called vertical section, which is where we are. This opens the target again. This one turns on or off the sheet annotations. In other words, if we'd made notes or dimensions on the sheet that we just came from, we could turn those on or off in this section. This will show or not show the callouts. For example, if I turn that off, we don't see the actual callout across the top. Turn it back on again. This will clip the model by callout. So if we do that, then we see the entire model. Put that back on again. And this one does almost nothing since we're already in the section that we're talking about. This one will take us back to the sheet model. Let's try that, open target. We're back in the sheet model, which is where the section came from. And we can zip back again to the design model, which is now reverted back to, in this case, a left view. Now keep in mind too, that besides the markers here, we can also use the previous model windows which will take us backwards and forwards between our various views. Quite useful and sometimes quicker than using a marker. Now, one thing I do need to do is to check the working units of these various views. If I have a look at that, we'll see that I'm still in inches and inches and massed units, which is just fine for the design model. But if I zip across to the target, which was the sheet model, and look at the settings for that, I see it's reverted to feet and inches, which is not what I want at all. I want that back in inches. So we're going to change that back to inches and everything's fine. We'll change that symbol too. And we'll say, okay, that change in working units was caused by the section English C drawing seed, which is inflicting its own settings on the sheets working units. In a production environment, you'll be using drawing seeds with specific settings for your particular working area. Now, since we're in the sheet drawing, you might as well add some text to this. Let's go to the text tools. And I've got this set up already, so it works well. And I'm just going to put rubbish in here. I don't really care what I'm typing at the moment. I'm just going to place this information around the sheet model, just as though you were adding notes to the design. You can also add dimensions here too. I'm going to get rid of that. And let's scoot back to the design model now. Here we see the text in place. And if I make an isometric of this, we see the text in the plane of the sheet view. In other words, in the plane of the section. Now adding text and dimensions like this, it's the ability to display relevant information at each section or detail. And in large projects, this is an efficient method of displaying contextual information. Now, when you first place the call out, I ask you to take a look at the height value yourself. Now, this means that depending on where the cutout is placed, all elements in the design will be part of the cutout if model is selected as the height value. Now, to avoid this, if that's not what you need, make a saved view of the elements you want to include in the call out and place the call out in that saved view. A marker can be used to link information other than sections or elevations. This includes links to other files and documents, and even links to web pages. Final plotting and printing composition is made by referencing the various saved views and models into a title block reference. You control the presentation display of the references in, of course, the references settings box. 
reference, save views display their markers, and naturally update if the model clip volume is updated. Now, since hypermodels are an extension of the fitted section tools, you can manipulate the clip volume and the location of the callouts using the same techniques. A save view is automatically created when a callout is placed, as we've seen. Now, I'd like you to at least experiment with this method and place more callouts in this bushing design. Try some of the other types of callouts on the detailing symbols box. And for more hypermodel information, try an internet search. You'll find quite a few videos which demonstrate this method and are really quite useful. But be prepared, it is quite a different system from what you're probably used to. And there seems to be a lot of information generated, particularly in the models dialog box. But of course, all of this can be brought together in presentation drawings. So give it a try, especially if you work in a high production environment or work with large projects. And of course, don't forget the help files.